It's back to school season. So what will your children be learning about in the classroom this year? Lots of Republicans, including Donald Trump, say that schools are brainwashing kids, poisoning them with wokeness. But one GOP candidate for president has made fighting the war on woke in public schools, fighting against quote-unquote indoctrination of our kids, his hill to die on. We have drawn a very clear line in the sand that says our school system is for educating kids, not indoctrinating kids. If you fall on the side of indoctrination, we're going to decline. If it's education, then we will do. We chose education over indoctrination. Yes, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis will see to it that students in the Sunshine State are no longer indoctrinated with gross propaganda, with harmful notions like, you know, Slavery is bad. That's the mandate from the governor. No indoctrination. But what does that actually look like in the classroom? It looks like this. Slavery is as old as time and has taken place in every corner of the world, even amongst the people I just left. Being taken as a slave is better than being killed, no? I don't see the problem. How can you come here to the 15th century and judge me by your standards from the 21st century? For those in the future to look back and do this is, well, it's stupid, though. You can't judge. Slavery is better than death. The cartoon said so. Never mind that death came for nearly all the natives that Christopher Columbus subjugated in the New World, including slaves. Or that Columbus allowed sex trafficking of native children among European settlers, something he actually wrote about in his letters. Obviously, that video did not come from Schoolhouse Rock. No, that animated non-apology for slavery is from an organization called PragerU, which, despite the name, is not a university. That video is not a one-off, either. It's part of an entire grade school curriculum. Here's how it portrays America's most famous abolitionist. My name is Frederick Douglass. Welcome to 1852. You have really cool hair. I'm certainly not okay with slavery, but the Founding Fathers made a compromise to achieve something great the making of the United States. Slavery was part of life all over the world. It was America that began the conversation to end it. Let me stop you right there, fictional Frederick Douglass, because it is true that the U.S. was the first nation to abolish slavery, if you don't count Denmark, Norway, Haiti, Great Britain, Portugal, Spain, France, Russia, Peru, Chile, Mexico, Uruguay, Bolivia, Greece, Serbia. The list goes on, but you get it. Factual inaccuracies aside, PragerU's Frederick Douglass goes on to blast the tactics of a more radical abolitionist, William Lloyd Garrison, as a stand-in for today's Black Lives Matter protesters. And people like Garrison don't just want slavery abolished, but the whole American system? You are correct. His approach is called radical. That means a complete fundamental change of everything. That seems silly. There are so many amazing things about America. We even had a black president. Two terms. So, Mr. Douglas, do you think we should be activists, just not radical ones? Layla, your America where people are free and everyone is equal under the law sounds pretty great. Did a pro-slavery AI write this? They might as well have. And sorry, that's supposed to be Frederick Douglass, the former fugitive slave who delivered a scathing speech titled What to the Slave is the Fourth of July? The ardent social critic who in another speech blasted American imperialists for conspiring against Haiti's black rulers, whose three sons all joined an army to eradicate slavery on American soil by force? That's the guy you now want to pretend to children in class was a guy who only wanted to work gradually and nonviolently within the system? PragerU, again, not a university, is a far-right media outlet bankrolled by GOP right-wing donors, like the late Sheldon Adelson. It's been flagged for years for misinformation on politics and climate science. It was founded by right-wing radio host Dennis Prager, who just this year falsely said, we don't know if the 2020 election was stolen, and that slavery wasn't so bad because most slaves could actually have children. And he said in 2020 that it's, quote, idiotic that you can't say the N-word. That's Prager. So it probably wouldn't surprise you to learn that for years, no reputable public school district would touch these propaganda Prager videos, until late last month, when the Florida Department of Education approved those Prager You Kids videos that you just saw for classroom use, saying their material aligns to Florida's revised civics and government standards.
So, the governor who said there'd be no indoctrinating of kids is now approving civics lessons from an outfit whose own founder boasts about indoctrinating kids. All I heard was, well, because you indoctrinate kids. And I, which is true. We bring doctrines to children. I, uh, that's a very fair statement. I said, but what, in, what is the bad of our indoctrination? Can you imagine if George Soros turned up at a teacher's union conference to say he was funding videos to literally indoctrinate conservative kids and make them liberal? Can you imagine the meltdown we would see on Fox and the rage from the likes of Ron DeSantis? As Adrian McCarthy, a Kansas State University researcher who co-authored a case study on PragerU, puts it, the kids' content from the right-wing outlet has a very strong agenda, a very strong us versus them dichotomy, and it's usually the evil, immoral leftists versus the moral Judeo-Christian right. She even calls them, these videos, a potential gateway to right-wing extremism. And yet, in DeSantis's Florida, it's not just radicalizing right-wing cartoon fan fiction that's being brought into the classroom. Classical works like Shakespeare are being removed from some classrooms by some Florida school districts who fear that the sexual content in Shakespeare plays will violate new Republican gag rules on classroom discussions about race and gender. Yeah, goodbye, Shakespeare. Those same concerns have led most Florida school districts to stop offering a college-level advanced placement course in psychology because it includes lessons on gender and sexual orientation, which are illegal in the sunshine state. That's in addition to at least 357 books that have been removed from Florida school libraries and lessons to comply with the DeSantis anti-indoctrination laws. Would you be shocked to also learn that with weeks to go before the new school year, Florida is facing one of the worst shortages of school teachers in America? Can't imagine why. This is the dystopian hellscape that is the Sunshine State under Governor Ron DeSantis. Yeah, own the libs, even if it means you're screwing over your own kids. And this is what presidential candidate DeSantis wants to bring to the rest of America, even though the rest of America doesn't seem that into it. Not even most Republicans. The New York Times and Siena College asked Republicans in a recent poll what they'd prefer, a candidate who focuses on defeating radical woke ideology in our schools, media and culture, or a candidate who focuses on restoring law and order at our streets and at the border. The anti-woke candidate got 24 percent. The traditional law and order candidate got 65 percent. In that poll, Republicans preferred Trump, Trump excuse me, over DeSantis by a crushing margin of 54 to 17, continuing a downward trend for Ron DeSantis. Look at this Washington Post chart. It shows how support for DeSantis against Trump, the red line, has plunged all year. But so has support for DeSantis against all the other Republican candidates. That's the blue line. The more people learn about Ron DeSantis and his war on work, woke, the less they like it. DeSantis knows this, so he's rebooting his campaign. Again, firing his campaign manager after she survived two rounds of job cuts already this summer. Too bad you can't reboot the candidate himself. Your poll numbers behind President Trump have been pretty substantially behind. Can you not here? <laughs> He's just weird, and his wife makes him sound even weirder. Was there for me. And he was there to go pick up my kids when I couldn't. And he did it with humility, and he did it with love. And I'll tell you what, can't ask for a better husband than that. Yes, Ron DeSantis should be president because he picked up his own kids from school while his wife had cancer. Okay. But it's not just his weirdness that's the problem, it's the authoritarianism, and not just when it comes to Florida's schools. After firing his campaign manager on Tuesday, DeSantis began his Wednesday by removing Monique Worrell, the democratically elected Orlando area state attorney and the only woman of color in that role in Florida for being too soft on crime. And just like a PragerU kids video, DeSantis didn't even share his evidence. Everything Ron DeSantis is doing, from gag orders on school teachers and librarians to elevating propaganda cartoons as education to replacing elected Democrats across the state with political lackeys, is meant to indoctrinate and gaslight and to shut down conversations and criticism. 
It's exhausting to a lot of Floridians, to most Americans, and even to a growing number of Republican primary voters. They're just not that into Ron. And Ron, our budding authoritarian, doesn't seem that into the idea of American democracy, you know, with checks and balances and respect for the will of the voters. And would you believe, as luck would have it, PragerU has a video for that, too.